What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. Today I'm going to be doing a scene breakdown of our recently uploaded skyscraper explosion utilizing the Chaos add-on for Blender 3D. I will be doing a more detailed tutorial showing you how you can fracture a skyscraper and then create the explosion utilizing the Chaos add-on in the future, but for this specific video this will just be more of a scene breakdown showing the basic concepts on how I made this explosion utilizing Chaos inside of Blender. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender and this is our scene here. As you can see, we have a pretty nice fire and smoke explosion here with several debris fields blasting out these uh, concrete particles that we've added using the concrete checkbox here under Chaos. And uh, yeah, I'll just go through it piece by piece and show you kind of the concepts behind building this. So first, I will go ahead and disable the concrete debris particle systems here that we added. And uh, we'll just go ahead and talk about the smoke and fire explosion first. So I'll go ahead and select the smoke domain here. This smoke domain was imported with the chaos add-on. However, we did change a few of the settings here. We changed the resolution divisions to 330 and then we we checked the dissolve checkbox for the smoke and then put the time for 320 frames. We also used the adaptive domain feature here just so we could get a little bit faster bake. Under the fire tab here, we decreased the reaction speed to 0.2 to get that fuel to burn off a little bit slower and create that gasoline style fiery result. Then under the smoke setting here, we increased the buoyancy density to 0.15 and then the heat to 0.15 as well to just to get some of the smoke and fire to drift upwards throughout the course of our explosion. Then we've also baked our high resolution noise on top of our original base mesh as I've shown you in the previous videos uh, with an up res factor of 2, strength at 1, scale at 2, and then the time at 0.1. And uh, yeah, we baked out the simulation from frame 1 to 138, just for around a 5 second animation. Alright, so now that we've gone through the smoke domain settings, let's go ahead and go through the chaos operators and particle systems that create this base mesh for the explosion. So we'll go ahead and select the domain here. While the domain cube is selected here, we'll just go up here and we'll just deselect it in the viewport so we can just look at the particles by themselves. Alright, so in order to create this explosion, I've used four chaos operators here. All four of them are the omnidirectional burst, blasting particles out in all directions, um, but we've adjusted their particle systems in different ways in order to get a more unique and organic result. So I'll go ahead and just deselect some of these here so we can start from scratch. And the first thing that I added to our scene here was just a very basic circular omnidirectional burst here that just blasts out a very uniform explosion in all directions. And this is just essentially just our base fire to get that initial impact. And if we go to the particle system tab here, we can see that we have 6,000 particles and then a lifetime of force. So a pretty quick explosion here for that first operator that we added. And uh, let's go ahead and deselect the first operator here and focus on the second one really quick. And if we scroll through our timeline here, we can actually play through it. And as you can see here, our second operator is just blasting out a smaller amount of particles, but with a longer lifetime. So these are kind of our tracer particles that are just blasting out past the initial explosion and creating those smaller smoke trails to kind of create those debris smoke fields blasting out from the initial gasoline style blast. So that's what the second operator was here. As you can see, if we zoom in, we've actually scaled our omnidirectional burst operator here on the X axis here so that the particles blast more outward away from the building. And then of course, as I said before, we have our lifetime of these particles at 14. So that they live a little bit longer and create that debris style effect. All right, so for our third and fourth omnidirectional burst operators here, we wanted to create two extremely dense particle systems blasting out for a gasoline style effect in very specific areas of the scene. So as you can see, if we scroll through our timeline here, we can see the concentration of the particles is a lot less uniform than our initial blast, which was just a lot of particles very uniformly stacked on top of each other. So for these two, essentially, we have these very dense particles being blasted out in very specific areas of our scene here. And uh, they also have a longer lifetime as well, as you can see here. We have these particles with a lifetime of nine, which is a little bit longer than our initial operator here, creating our initial gasoline explosion, but not quite as long as 
as our tracer particles creating that debris field. We also have quite a bit of particles in each of these operators here. We have 2000 on each. So essentially what this is doing here is it's just creating very dense portions of fuel that are blasting out in very specific areas. So if we just go to the beginning here, you can see, and we'll just play through it. You can see the density of the particles being blasted out here to create those very fiery portions of flames being blasted out in those two specific areas. And if we actually go ahead and reselect our smoke domain here and then go back, we'll go back to frame around frame 40, and then we go to our domain tab here and we just reselect our view option. We can actually see how the concentration of fire and flames are much higher where these two omnidirectional bursts are blasting out their fuel. So as you can see right here is one of those omnidirectional bursts and then right here we have the second one um, which are creating this very high concentration of fuel that's uh, burning off in our explosion here and uh, I think that gives it a pretty unique look. All right, so finally in our scene here, of course, we topped off our explosion with some debris. So let's go ahead and once again, select our smoke domain here and we'll just deselect our view option. And then we'll go down here. We'll go over here to our concrete particles and just reselect our emitters here. And uh, essentially to add these concrete particles to our scene here, we use the uh, concrete checkbox with an omnidirectional burst operator and uh, added two separate particle systems to our scene. One of them is blasting out on the right side here. As you can see, if we scroll through it, when our explosion happens, it goes around frame 30. It's just throwing out some debris kind of toward the camera here past our explosion. Uh, I think we have, if we select our particle system here and we go to our particle tab, we can see we have around 2,000 concrete particles being blasted out here. And then if we go to that second one and select it, as you can see, we've blasted out in this particle system 3,000 concrete particles just past our explosion and in a different direction here. We also experimented with the scale of these concrete debris operators as well, just to get the debris going in different directions or however we'd like. Um, but this is kind of the general idea behind adding those debris fields. And uh, we didn't add any other debris fields in this specific example. We definitely could have. We could have probably used the glass particles as well, as well as metal and maybe even the burning debris pieces here. But I think the concrete debris field worked pretty well and I was fairly happy with the result that we got. Finally, one thing I should mention here is our building collision properties here to get the concrete operators as well as our fuel particle systems to interact with our building here what we did is under the physics properties here we added collision and fluid collision properties for both particles and smoke and fire so that all of our physics and particle systems would interact as if this building was there in the scene with them so this is something which was definitely very important in getting everything to feel a little bit more interactive finally of course for our environment we under the world properties tab here we've added a sky texture for some ambient lighting and then we've lit our scene with two area lights inside a blender just to give the scene some shape and some depth after doing the scene setup of course we added a camera to our scene and then as always i output my animation with an open exr file format with an alpha channel and export and emission pass as well and then composited the whole scene inside of after effects with some glow and glare as well as a sky background Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. As I mentioned before, I will be doing a more detailed tutorial on creating some building destruction in the future, so be sure to subscribe and be on the lookout for that. I'll see you guys next time.